Yeah, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much for giving this opportunity of speaking on this, this very, very important subject. Now, everybody, whosoever is interested in dairy business, and especially the farm business, they are looking for this scheme. And uh, that was the reason that I, I thought that this will be the right subject for the people, those who are interested in dairy in establishing a farm and having a largest subsidy ever announced by the government of India. And this is 2 CR, 2 crore subsidy. The total project of uh, that will be 4.35 crores. Out of that, 2 crore will be the government money. And it is a grant, not to return. But uh, there, there is a, a lot of, uh, you know, rules, regulations, and the papers, documents, all those things are required before this scheme is sanctioned to a person. So that was the purpose of, uh, you know, announcing, thinking of speaking on this subject. This subject will be benefiting those who want to establish a bigger farm, organized farm on the Western model. And that is the reason of talk, my uh, objective of my talk. Yeah, now, uh, the, the BMF, it is in short, it is called the BMF. BMF means the breed multiplication scheme, uh, farm. And this is under Rastriya Gokul Mission, which is called the RGM. Rastriya Gokul Mission, Mission is an organization, larger, uh, larger uh, uh, kind of program uh, run by government of India and where the funding is done directly by the government of India. There's no state government involved in, in this scheme. It's directly from government of India, uh, Delhi. And uh, this scheme was announced in October 2021. And since then, there are many beneficiaries. They have taken benefit of this. And now everything is on. The beauty of this scheme it is specially promoting the indigenous cows and buffaloes. And uh, it is, uh, everything is online. Everything, you need not to submit a, a hard copy in this scheme for the approval. Everything is online. You just go to the online, open the site and follow the instructions and you are in and approvals that the reason is that implementing agency is National Dairy Development Board. Here, government of India has assigned this job to an organization which has actually implemented operation flood in the country. And because of that, the country became uh, more than sufficient, rather affluent in the milk production. So that program was called Operation Flood, started in 70s, and ended in 1994. So this is how uh, 1996. This is how uh, this agency is uh, implementing. There is no state government involvement. There is no banking uh, ruling involved. Everything is decided by NDTV and government of India. The background was why it was announced and what was the purpose of this? Because of late. When we earlier the National Dairy Development Board, when they announced uh, this operation flood, that time the country was suffering with the milk shortage. And now we are the surplus country. About 23% of the world milk production is done by India. So we are now surplus. We, we have uh, all the resources. And now we thought of, in the meantime, what happened during the operation flood? For want of more quantity of milk, generally people were allowed to uh, rear the foreign exotic breed, that is HF and Jersey. But now we found that our Indian breeds, they were the very fantastic breeds. Only the problem was that their milk yield was not so much. So uh, it, they were not preferred and slowly and slowly their number got reduced. So that was the concern government of India understood that. And uh, with the suggestion of NDDB, now they, have, uh, they planned this scheme and this, this scheme was actually announced. 
in October 2021. Just a minute. Excuse me. Yeah. So here, here uh, the reason was let us uh, give larger chunk of the uh, you know subsidy and make it a large scheme. So the scheme was made up above four crores. A person, a person is having uh, less money and they are having less uh, uh, you know, area of land, they will not be able to uh, adopt this scheme. Uh, we will discuss on that, the details on that. Entrepreneurs will be uh, establishing breed multiplication and for the allied heifers of sex semen. So generally here, the high technology will be used, as I told you, that this scheme is trying to structure, trying to create the organized dairy farms in the country, and that is on Western, Western uh, style and fully technical dairy farms. And diseases will be uh, screened, the animals will be screened for certain diseases, and bulls produced over here, like male calves, Generally, it happens what the male calf will be doing. So what, what we do, and that is a big query. So generally, the bull mother uh, farm, they will collect, they will purchase these things, these uh, male farms, and it will, will go for the semen production. And BMF, uh, this uh, farm will also act as a training center. If somebody want to learn what is a technical uh, functioning for a dairy, dairy farm. So they can go there, they can see how they technically a farm can be established and what are the activities they have to take and what are the parameters they have to you know, imply into that. So this is how. So we wanted to uh, just explain what is the breed multiplication scheme and what is breed multiplication farm. Breed multiplication scheme is intended to multiply the indigenous breeds of cows and also buffalo and the breed multiplication farms are the entities they are the units of breed multiplication scheme and breed multiplication scheme is a part of rasti ego condition so 200 adult animals in one year has to be inducted latest technology of sex semen and ivf has to be used and total capital investment is 435 CR. And who can do it? Entrepreneur, he has to be a single person, entrepreneur. He has to be a aggregator who is doing uh, uh, the milk business by collecting the milk. And he is a private individual, anybody. He is a SSG, self help groups, FPOs, FCOs, JLG, and Section 8 companies. These Section 8 companies are especially included into this just because their objective is matching with the with the social cause. So again, we wanted to highlight yep. that what are the what are the breeds available for you to rear into the breed multiplication farm. That is Gir, indigenous breed, Sahiwal, again indigenous, Red Sindhi, Rati, Tankrej. And there are many more uh, breeds have been allowed to be, you know, reared in the farm, along with the buffaloes breeds, that is Murra, Badawri, Neeli, Ravi. So many, many buffaloes are also involved, included into the scheme. So the person, those who are going for the breed multiplication scheme, they have to choose any two of the breeds at a time. The farm cannot uh, rear more than two breeds. This was the purpose that if they are going for more number of breeds, maybe the excellence will not be there for all the breeds. So better do less number of breeds and become an excellent center from where people can be assured of purchasing the pure breed animals, like pure breed Sahivas, the pure breed Red Sindhi, pure breed Muraba Clos, like so th there will be either a single breed or it can be a combo of two, buffalo and cow. And out of that, only one one breed, one breed of buffalo and one breed of cow will be taken. 
farm. Okay, so uh, HF and Jersey, they, it has also been allowed, but there is a rider in that, that they have to be done only with in vitro fertilization. In vitro fertilization is in all together a very high level of technical uh, intervention where a single cow can produce more than eight to 10 calves at a time. So the purpose of this HF and Jersey, they will be uh, allowed, but with the IVF technology only. And taking an IDF technology is a very high technology, has to be done a lot of uh, things to rear the mother who is going to uh, give the embryo. Mother will be giving the embryo and the semen embryo will be fertilized outside the body. And finally, after the fertilization, this embryo will be set into the different cows. So the same cow's embryo will be used in eight to 10 cows and there will be eight to 10 calves at the time from eight to 10 cows. So this is the purpose of this idea. Now, first stage, they, they, they have divided uh, the, the process into two stages. The first stage is uh, that it is uh, uh, applicants expression of interest on format number one. There are six formats they have given. It is everything is online. If the moment you see the site, you will see all these things on that. But it is not elaborated as what we are going to talk today. And that was the purpose of this. So uh, these six formats are different formats where you have to give declarations, so affidavits, uh, notarized affidavits, and your commitment to do this, do this, do this, do this, like that. So I'm not going into detail with these formats, but these formats are the first stage to identify you that you are the person, you are right person. And according to the uh, you know, screening of the uh, uh, formats, you will be screened out. Yes, you are the person will go ahead with you. And then the second stage comes, uh, that is for the submission of the detailed project report. Then the uh, NDDB will ask that, what is your now program? Tell me how you are going to do this 200 animal in a year. Okay. So there has to be a power of attorney also. There, there are two things. As they have allowed the individual person also, groups also, SHG also, so there is a two type of thing, even the companies. So they have divided things, the requirements in, into different. Individual requirement is different. Company's requirement is different. The last point where uh, I'm talking about the power of attorney in favor of the authorized signatory, it is a company issue or it is an SSG issue or it is a JLG issue wherever there is a multiplication of the uh, multiple owners are there it is a corporation or it is a kind of body entity, registered entity. So there a signatory has to be authorized that this is the signatory who will be, you know, taking all the signatures on the documents. So let us take the, what is the requirement for the individuals? Uh, individual requirement is, uh, I, I'll just make the, my uh, video of, there is no point, and then we'll come to that, right? When we discuss on that, yeah. So the individual is, individual is their copy of Aadhaar card, notarized declaration that individual is not a blacklisted person. And he has a minimum five acre land, own land, name in his name only, his or her name only. And copy of ownership of the document about that five acre land they have to submit a document saying that it is in her name or his name and register long-term lease deed. In case they do not have the five-acre land, they have to take a lease land and which is not less than 10 years. So that the lease has to be registered and that copy has to be submitted. So own funds, here that is the beauty. Look at the beauty. What is, what is this scheme says about? The scheme says that the own fund, suppose you are going to use own fund, you are not going to take any bank loaning. So you will be sub, uh, you will be depositing 10% minimum uh, as, a, uh, as a seed money, 43.5 lakhs. 
And suppose you are going to take the bank loan, you have to deposit 37.5% uh, as a seed money uh, for taking bank loan of 191.5%. So this is how they have structured uh, for the uh, common person, uh, individual person, as well as this is this funding is funding rider is for individual as well as for the company board. Now, company has to give additional documents that is the, the copy of certificate of incorporation when the company was formed, or those papers, a copy of the article of association, a notarized declaration of organization has not been blacklisted. Certificate of experience of breeding and rearing of dairy animal uh, from local government veterinarian. Everyone, even the individual, has to give a certification from the local veterinarian that he has taken a, a training in the in the rearing the animal, and he is a person uh, that he is already rearing the cattle. He has the practical experience of rearing the cattle, and that is how that certificate. Uh, would give a kind of affidavit will be signed by the veterinarian, local veterinarian, in case of individual as well as in case of company. So, again, individual and company side. See, certificate of experience in breeding, of rearing, uh, rearing and dairy animals, that is an of two. They have to, it has to be taken, as I told, with the veterinarian. And training certificate, if you have joined some of the organization training institute for taking a training, like India Right Karnal or any other places where, uh, uh, you know, uh, like KVC, uh, KVC like uh, uh, Krishi Vigyan Kendra. So if you are joining any kind of training for about handling a farm or rearing an animal, that certificate has to be uploaded. A documentary proof uh, is to be attached regarding hiring a waiter. Suppose a person has not done any training. He has the money. He has land. He want to uh, enter into this. He want to do this uh, breed multiplication farm. So he has to take a documentary evidence from a veterinarian that he has been hired to assist this person for in animal rearing in technical and company and you look at here and extra three is the affidavit entrepreneur will be responsible to establish you have to give a kind of affidavit that yes i will be uh yeah yeah hello i believe uh, i'm okay yes sir please continue okay fine so here the entrepreneur will be responsible to establish a kind of you know affidavit saying that i'll be uh, uh, I'll be uh, establishing 20, 200 milch cows or buffaloes, and that too they have given a rider of first and second lactation only. The cows of second, uh, third, fourth, fifth, sixth lactation will not be allowed in this. So we'll use latest breeding technology that is already clear. Exotic breeds has to be used with the permission exotic breeds are not allowed allowed uh, as a general it has to be taken permission has to be taken because the, all the support for the ivr will be given by the ndpb a single person cannot do ivr unless there is a uh, direct laboratory attached with that because the embryos has to be flushed out and then embryo has to be taken to the laboratory embryos has to be fertilized in that and thereafter, again, the embryo has to be put to the farm and uh, uh, to the animals so that eight to 10 cows, uh, calves can be, you know, uh, delivered at a time on a single day. So uh, 116 elite female calves has to be sold out and 70 buffalo female calves. So the point here they are making is that whatever the female calves are coming, because you use the sex semen, no? So in sex semen, generally what happened, 90% the chances will be there that the female calves will come, not the male calf. Male calf chances will be hardly 10 to 12%. And uh, that is why they are telling that whatever the 100, suppose 200 cows are there, so there will be 200 milk 
calf, rest is a female calf. Out of that, you have to sell out at least 116 in case of cows and 70 in case of buffaloes uh, to the farmers. This is the, pur this, the purpose of this is dissemination of these breeds in the, in the entire country. So that tomorrow, today, uh, the, the moment this uh, indigenous cows, A2 milk, all these things came into the mind of purchaser, they started paying very high rate for the milk uh, in, on the name of, you know, at name of A2 milk. Similarly, the indigenous breed cattle price went very high. Now uh, they are earlier they were cost uh, costing about forty to fifty thousand rupees. Now they are costing about eighty to ninety to one lakh rupees. So that has uh, uh, to be uh, cooled down. That is not the rate, but that has to be cooled down. If the availability is increased, obviously the rate will come down. So that is the purpose. And these breeds are being the pure breeds. Semen is going to be used for the pure breed. That is why the breed restriction is there. If you keep any breed and semen is not available, how to breed those animals? And they will not be the pure breed. They will become cross breeds. So the pure breed availability in the entire country has to be improved. And that is the purpose of this, that you have to sell at least 115, 16 female calves for the cows and 70 calves for the female, uh, female calves for the buffaloes. DPR, they have taken on the second stage. First, they want to know whether the person has the caliber to establish the farm. Then only they will invite the DPR. Disease-free uh, farm testing is, is a routine. The moment BMF will be established, diseases has to be, animal has to be screened for the diseases and they have to be declared by the local veterinarian that yes, this farm is disease free. Feeding balance ration, calf rearing scientifically, and every, yeah, this is the beauty of this scheme. This scheme is open to entire country. It is every 25th of the month is the closer day. And before that, whatever the application has read, reached to the NDDB, the NDDB will evaluate those applications in the next month so the, the applicant can uh, go to the site and just check what is the status of its application and so that he can be assured whether I am in the line or not. Look at the subsidy. How the subsidy has been decided? The first year month, whatever I talked about, that uh, certain seed money you have to give, then the, they will give after the screening and after the seeing the DPR, the second stage, they will be issuing a letter to the bank directly. Here, see, the beauty here in this scheme is bank is not having the high head that I will give or I will not give. No. It is the approval given by NDDB, letter given by NDDB after the screening that this person need, this person uh, is selected for the BMF and he needs this much money. So now you have to give the bank loan. So they have to simply abide. What they can dictate is just the interest rate, which varies bank to bank. Some bank will give lesser interest, some bank will give more interest. So now here, the individual is free to take loan from any of the bank. If suppose the letter has come in the name of, suppose the State Bank of India. State Bank of India rates of interest are high and there is a Canada bank or there is a SDFC and there is only nationalized bank. SDFC, ICICI are not in this. It's only the nationalized bank, commercial banks are into this. So suppose they want to go to the uh, Bank of Baroda and Bank of Baroda gives 1% or 2% lesser interest. So the person will request NDDB, sir, please change the application from the uh, name of uh, uh, State Bank of India and issue in the name of this branch, such and such branch uh, of Bank of Baroda. And it, NDDB will do that, no issue. So they have given the freedom of selecting the loan because the loan interest varies bank to bank. So that leverage they have given to the individual. NDDB ascertains the progress. So now progress will be monitored by NDDB 
and everything is monitored online. That is the beauty of another beauty of this scheme that the NDDB sitting over there will be able to monitor how the animal is behaving. See how, how they are going to do, we'll discuss further. So then apply uh, to DHA after seeing the progress at the farm, like shade construction, like uh, fodder cultivation, like uh, applic this uh, implements of the agriculture, like tractors, trolleys, and all those things, laborers, manpower, everything. So they will apply to the DASD. Direct, uh, directorate of, uh, sorry, Department of Animal Husbandry and Dairy in New Delhi. That this is the farm working very nicely, kindly approve this subsidy. So now Government of India will approve that subsidy and that approval will come to, come to uh, the person, uh, individual. And the, it will be, maybe if the progress is very good, 50% of the subsidy, that is one CR, will be released in, in one go, or it can be divided in four stages if the progress is not good. Progress is going on, but not speedy, so it will be dis, uh, divided. So here the leverage is given to NDDB. If NDDB want to approve for 50% or 25% of 50%, mean 12.5%, 12.5%, 12.5% uh, can be approved like 25 CR, 20, uh, 25 lakh, 25 lakh, 25 lakh can be given in two or it can be given 12.5 lakh, 12.5 lakh, 12.5 lakh, whatever. So generally what is happening as per my experience, uh, as there are many uh, my clients, they have got this scheme and they are working on that. So the first leg, they release one CR straight in. or maybe Many cases they have released 50 lakhs, 55 lakhs, 70 lakhs, 80 lakhs, like that. So that they will release and it is a grant. You need not to return. So thereafter, uh, they are telling that 25, 25, the balance 25, 25, it will be uh, as per the monitoring through the GPS. The monitoring is going to be through GPS, through the NR. Every animal will be registered under NR. NR is a scheme which is run by the government uh, NDDB and NDDB has got a geo identity identity tax and that tax are applied on the animal wherever the animal is in the country it can be traced out wherever the animal is and how it is behaved. so this is the system of you know uh, monitoring the system that how they will monitor the farm that is a big question such farms such larger farms so many animals in the country how they will be monitored so they will be monitored under enough. So uh, this is about this scheme and uh, we will be further going into, dwelling into on this uh, speech, uh, I mean this talk, and we will be knowing nitty gritties of this scheme. This scheme is beautiful for the person, those who want to actually establish a farm, it is not good for the person if you want only the money and not going to establish the farm and he feels that subsidy will come, no, it will never come. It is NDDB. NDDB will never listen to any other person. They will not release the funds unless there is a progress. So those who are really interested persons, they, they can take the benefit of this. If there is a, any kind of, you know, uh, uh, in the second thought in mind, that I'll be taking the subsidy, doing some part and then leave, you know, that will not work here because the government of India is involved and you will be liable to repay the uh, whatever amount has been released to you. You will be liable to repay with interest and interest will be very high. So it's not good to jump into this scheme unless you have real, you know, uh, intent, intention to really do and establish a technical large scale farm and that is the purpose the purpose is they are what they are insisting is you have to establish 200 adult animals in a year so what all has to be done that now my next slide will be telling you what all need to be done to establish this farm in one year so these are the issues 
whether you have five acre land or not, and 10 to 20 acre land for fodder cultivation or not. This 10 to 20 acre land of fodder cultivation is not need to be in your name. It can be a lease land for fodder cultivation because 200 animal needs that much fodder from where it will come. So that is the purpose of putting this rider. 200 animal induction, only first and second lactation. Suppose you go and buy the animal, there are 10 animals. Only two are there which is uh, falling into the first and second lactation. So you will be getting very less number of animals which is first and second lactation. The scheme want young animals, not the aged animals. Animal of any two breeds, you have to select only two breeds. Suppose you are going into the market and you are seeing that I can buy five animals, but they are not of the same breed. So that you cannot do. These are the riders they have put. Construction of 300 animal set, 200 adult animal and plus the followers. So total 300 animal set you have to construct. It's a huge money. Government of India is giving as a grant, but then you have to construct the set. It cannot happen. It is not possible that you just get the money and don't construct the shed. It is not possible. 100 uh, uh, calf pen. You have to create 100 calf pen because 200 calf will be, uh, will be uh, you know, taking birth and they have to be reared. So for that, at least 100 calf pens has to be created. Store for cattle feed, store for dry fodder, and store for green fodder, chaff cutter, shed for green fodder, where the chaff cutter will be there. So these things are the capital investment which, which uh, uh, government of India is offering into 2CR. Shed for agriculture implements, like you know, you have tractors, trolleys, many big uh, instruments, tillers and all those things, so harrows, all these things will be, have to be kept somewhere. So shed has to be there. Construction of administrative block, the farm will have an administrative block. So that is also provision is given. So setting of two KL uh, BMC, uh, 2000 liter bulk milk cooling units and milk testing uh, laboratory will be set up. Arranging milk cooling and uh, retailing uh, and fodder cultivation 10 to 15 or 10 to 20 acres. So you see itself is a huge job. You can trust it to the farmers and you can buy the fodder land fodder uh, from them, or you can take the fodder land on these and you can uh, do the uh, fodder cultivation. Establishing cattle feed plant, because the cattle feed has to be manufactured in the farm. Silage plant has to be manufactured in the farm. Arrange ingredient for the cattle feed plant from the market like maize, jowar, bajra, all these have to be ground, mixed, and the cattle feed has to be uh, manufactured. Establishing dry fodder uh, stock, like for, like uh, baling machine, like paddy straw, ragi straw, and uh, maize straw, all these things has to be, you know, uh, wheat straw has to be stored at the time of harvest. So th these are the things has to be done in a year, getting power connection for the farm and plant. In power connection, you know, it has to be from the electricity board. Getting train manpower for the farm, keeping all accounts and the farm recording, like milk recording, animal recording, when it was, uh, you know, inseminated, when it delivered, what was the calf size, what was the weight of the calf, how much milk it has given, morning, evening, what is the milk, Total lactation, what is the mean? All these records has to be monitored through the geo, uh, geo tags. Geo tag, animal has to be tagged. Animal has to be included in enough. Arranging veterinary doctor for the farm has to, veterinary doctor has to visit every week to the farm. Ready to eliminate substandard animals. Suppose the animal is, is uh, was to give 20 liter milk and it is not giving, it is giving only 12 liter of milk the animal has to be removed from the farm because the farm standard will go down. So it has to be sold to the nearby uh, uh, farmers at a lower cost. Arranging uh, breeding setup, that is AI, artificial insemination, 
in vitro fertilization, sex semen, replacing new animal, and selling heifers 160 every day, 116 every year, composing the dung management. Yeah, composting and dung management, very important. 200 animals, 300 animals. So there will be huge amount of dung. So how we are going to do? So then that is Gober gas plant. And besides that, disease control, vaccination, deworming, water arrangement, and, uh, labor quarters, those who live into the farm, 24 bar 7. So this can only be done by a person who is really having passion to do a dairy farm. It is not an easy job. And at the same time, it is not a small amount of grant you are getting from government of India. And believe me, I have seen so liberally fund is being given in this scheme. 80 lakh, straight away they are signing. Okay, don't pay this 80 lakh, but establish the farm. If they are not establishing the farm, then the penalty comes that you have to repay the bank, uh, lo, uh, this money uh, with interest. So there are uh, frequently asked questions also. Uh, we'll go to the question answer, then we will delve into this if some question comes with this. Otherwise, my, I have completed my 40 minutes into this. So uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you for a wonderful uh, presentation. I will take up the questions right now, sir. Uh, can you please stop sharing the screen, sir, so that we can see your full video? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. The first one is, if I have a farm of animals, will I be able to add the numbers of animals and take the benefits of BMF? Uh, that, is, that is a big question. Everybody is raising this point because you want a person that he is having experience in rearing the animal, right? So means he had them, right? Now that person comes to you and he, you say uh, that uh, this person will not be allowed. They don't allow. They don't allow any old animal. They want you are having farm. You carry that farm. This farm will be separately set up with the new animal. Your animal will not be mixed with this because uh, we want to start afresh. So now even the farm is having 100 animals those 100 animals are not becoming part of this 200 animal. If it becomes part of this 200 animal, it becomes very easy for that person because he will get the 100% 100 animal uh, plus and then he will establish the farm. But they are not alone. A case in Kerala, my client, he has already 80 animals. He is running a successful dairy. He is a progressive farmer using all the technology. But when he approached, they told, no, you have to keep this 80, 100 animals um, separate and this 200 animal farm separate. That becomes too big an issue because 300 animals and uh, that becomes difficult to run. So uh, he's finally, he told, no, I cannot do that. But he was uh, uh, approved. His uh, you know, application was approved. So the answer is no. Okay, I'll move on to the next question, sir. In how many years uh, the loan of 2.35 crores will be returned? Yeah, that, that is, that is a, uh, they have given very short period. They have given only five years. Within five years, see the structure is like uh, 400, uh, 435 lakh is the total budget for the capital investment. Recurring, you for, forget. Recurring is already 20 lakh. That is different. We are talking only for the animals, buildings, machinery, and some miscellaneous item. So for that 435 lakh they have given. Out of that, government is giving 200 lakhs. That is 2 CR. So 235 lakh is a fund from either on loan or your own money. So for that, suppose a person is putting that much money into this and then he has to take, you know, 
uh, he has to take loan from the uh, bank, it will be paid only in five years. They have given the term end in five years. Bank is ready to give you for 10 years, 20 years, no issue. But NDDB is not allowing it. They are telling only for five years. Yes, that is the okay, answer. Sir. Okay, sir. Term loan is five years. Okay, sir. How many acres of land would be needed to establish BMF? Yeah, earlier they gave the three acre, but now they have revised to five acre because three acre is too less land for 200 animals. 200 in first year. In third year, you will find these animals will become almost about 350 or maybe 400. If you don't sell, if you are selling all the heifers and animals regularly from the farm and replacing the animal, then it is possible that they will be about 300. Otherwise, they will by five years, they will become five, uh, more than 500 animals. So they are, they understood and later on they revised it to five acres. So five acre minimum land in your name is required. That is a requirement. And 10 to 20 acres, minimum 10 and 20 maximum acres land on lease for fodder cultivation. So these two things are required. Without that, the scheme will not be made. And there has to be some water body. Because water, uh, you cannot. <laughs> every animal require every day 30 liter of uh, water. 20 liter for drinking and uh, 30 liter, some bigger animal will go up to that. And about 20 to 30 liter for the washing. So 50 to 60 liter every day water is required per animal. So if the place is like place is the Rajasthan, there is no water. So they will not grant you. No, not at all. So water has to be there. Land has to be there. And land has to be fertile so that the water can be I mean, cultivated. Yes. Okay. And move to the next question, sir. Uh, can two persons uh, join land and take the benefit of the scheme? Yes. This they have allowed. What they are telling that is JLG, Joint Liability uh, Group Companies, or partnership company also. You can be a partner and uh, you join. The liability will be divided on both. So that they are uh, allowing. It is allowed in this uh, uh, scheme. Yes, you are right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Who will decide about the bank? from which the loan is to be taken? Uh, this is a beauty. Earlier what happened for any of the dairy farm, the farmer was going uh, to the consultant or may not go to the consultant, go to the CA, they will get three, four page DPR and they will go to the bank, bank will throw that DPR, they will say, what if this is not a DPR, then they will go to the consultant, the consultant will prepare a DPR that DPR will be given to the bank and bank fellow will sell that, uh, no, you come this day, that day, that day, that day. Dilly dolly they will do. They, they are not assured whether this person will be able to do uh, the uh, you know farming or not. So with that, uh, are many of the branch managers, they are not very pro to this because there are a lot of NPA into this, lot of NPA. Because uh, when they sanction the loan, from a bank manager when he sanctions the loan, he doesn't know about anything about technicality about the dairy now. So he doesn't know. He only knows, oh, there is a shed, oh, fine. Loan should be given. Shed will not give the milk now. Milk is from the animals. He doesn't know anything about animals. And that is how in the country, it has become a kind of understanding that take the loan of dairy and don't pay because it will not run. Because it was the branch manager who was deciding. Now this is the technical head of the country that is National Dairy Development Board that decides whether this person can do or not. So there is a lot of difference. So now banks uh, are not having upper say. NDDB is having upper say. That they have passed on to the NDDB. They have told that you can find out from your area banks, whatever bank. They have only given one rider. It should be Nationalized Commercial Bank of India. That's all. It should be 
SBI, it's Bank of Baroda, Union Bank, whatever. The, the seven, uh, the 12 banks are existing in our country after the merger. All banks are allowed, except the private bank. They have not given the, this thing to the private. So you can search and the branch manager, which branch manager is very pally to you. You are, you are uh, very, you know, having a good relation. The branch manager is positive to sanction also because branch manager, once the letter comes from NDDB, bank has got no say. They can't say no. It is sanctioned after lot of screening, so bank bank can't say no. So they have given that you decide which bank of your area, and we will give you the letter of that bank. So this is an ease they have created. Yeah, you are right. This is a good question. Okay, I'll move on to the next one, sir. Can I put my own money? If I don't want to take loan, will it be allowed in the scheme? They have, they have given a rider only 10%, only 50 lakh, 43.5 lakh they have given. That much only you can give your own money. You have to take loan. There is a reason behind that. The reason behind that, the technicality is being examined. Look at this, uh, this my explanation. It's very important to understand what matters by it's my money I want to give, I want to establish. Why you are stopping? So their, their thinking is that technicality we are examining. That yes, this person has a land, he has water, he can do, he has manpower, he can establish everything, he has the muscle uh, money power, he can do everything. But whether Bank, once the bank comes, then he start examining this land, which khata, a khata, b khata, whether it is his land, is it disputed land, whether it is this land is having some kind of cultivation, cultivability or not, all those things. So legality as well as technicality will be screened by the bank again. So that is the reason they want to keep a bank in the loop. So they have restricted the money only up to 50 lakh. Out of 435 lakh, 50 lakh can, you can go up to. Rest, two lakh, 200 lakh is uh, the subsidy. Balance 191, you have to take from uh, the bank. Yeah. Yeah. All money you cannot put. All money you cannot put and just uh, do the business. No, no, not okay. at all. What are Section 8 companies? <laughs> Section 8 companies are actually, uh, if you allow me for another five minutes, I'll dwell with one or two slides. That yes, will give you a picture. Suppose I share this. Let me go to that. Uh, yeah. We are here. Let's see what is this. It is a uh, it is a frequently asked question. Generally, people ask these questions. So I thought of uh, keeping these questions into this. This uh, section eight companies are purposely included. There is a reason we have now. NDDB was always working with the cooperatives, and that is why the. Uh, Site name is eoi.ndb.coop. I have not written any here, but kindly make a note the site where you can upload all these things or you can read all these about this uh, uh, you know, scheme is eoi.ndb.coop. OP. So the NDDB has been since beginning working with cooperative, cooperative of the uh, supported by government, cooperative not supported by government, but they have been working by and large with the cooperative. And they established the milk cooperative, right milk cooperative. Otherwise, there was a connotation that the cooperatives are uh, not a good organization. They, there is a lot of uh, bungling into the cooperative. 
So that was erad uh, eradicated by while establishing the milk co-op. Milk cooperative actually functioned and actually they are functioning till today, functioning till today, and they are functioning into profit. So thereafter, a time came that we wanted to travel from cooperative to the company. We thought, now these are big enterprises, why they cannot become companies? Crores and crores of rupees they are handling. Why they cannot become company? So the chapter was added to this. And that chapter was called the producer company. It's a kind of company act has been added a chapter, which is producer company. Now, these uh, Section 8 companies are companies under Companies Act 2013. So Section 8 deals with a kind of company which work for, you know, no profit, no loss. They are non-profit organizations. They are doing for the welfare, education, technical education, environmental upliftment, charity, sports, arts, all these things are included into uh, this Section 8 company. So their objective is not to earn profit. So that was the reason when NDDB has migrated and many of the milk cooperative has been converted into the producer company. So how to include them? That was the idea. So that has been included into this as a Section 8 company. The Section 8 companies work on no profit, no loss. And they are the right entity under the uh, Companies Act 2013. Yes, ma'am. This is the answer. So I wanted to show this uh, frequently asked questions. Uh, one or two things only, not more. Yeah. The, <laughs> they are talking about Yes, sir. Again, the full... I have a few more questions. Shall I finish it or you want to do... Any question, any question from your side? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will take it up, sir. How can farmers and agri-entrepreneurs ensure that their breed multiplication farm meets the necessary standards to qualify for the subsidy? No, the first only, the six farmers I discussed, no. Huh. Six number of farmers. This six number of farmers you upload, these farmers are enough to judge whether this person can do this business or not. So first six formats that they call is expression of interest, EOI. Expression of interest itself include six formats and plus two annexers. And these two annexers are actually affidavits. So you have to, after doing this, they will screen it. And if you are a right person, they will invite your the detailed project report. This is how they will judge that you will be uh, given this uh, scheme or not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next one is, what is the timeline for the application and approval process for the subsidy for breed multiplication? Part? Very good question, madam. Very good question. The timeline is, this scheme is open every day. Every 25th of every month is the closing for that month. Again, from 26th, the second month starts. So the application is open every day, 24 hours. You can go to the site, upload the application, no issue. But for, from that 26th to 25th of this month, they will gather the application and they will take it for the appraisal. So, suppose you have applied in June 25th, before June 25th, you have applied. So, that is under appraisal in July. In July end, after 25th, give, give them one month. After 25th, go to the site and see you will find that my application is under this condition. Your application will be included there. 
and it will be given whether approved, being approved, under process, or rejected. Yeah. But this okay. is the answer. Okay, I'll take up the next question, sir. Are there any specific training or certification requirements for individuals or staff involved in the breed multiplication farm to be eligible for a subsidy? It is required. Required. The format two and format three says about that that you have to have some kind of experience of animal rearing. Whatever people have been telling in that format. They will say that, sir, I am seeing this uh, animal rearing since my age, sir. Childhood I have seen, sir. I know about that. No, that is not that is not agreed upon. You have to have uh, some training from some of the institute. And if you are not done, you do the training, then you apply. That is. Or if, even that is also not possible. Suppose you cannot go for the training. Okay, fine. You hire a veterinarian for the farm. You have to pay for that. That veterinarian will be taking care of the technical issues and you take care of the business issue. That also they have allowed. So training is a must. It is, it is required, one of the requirements. And your experience of handling animal gives you a leverage to get selected. So those persons, those who are having the farm, they get selected. But their animals are not included in this. That is the irony. There are many people are talking on that, but no decision has been taken. Government of India says no. It will be a separate entity, a new entity. Okay. Can multiple breed yes. multiplications farm under the same ownership apply for uh, subsidies separately or is it limited to one application no, no, for limited entry? To limited to two breeds, either one cow or buffalo, or two types of cows or two types of buffaloes, they have limited to two breeds. If it is a buffalo farm, you can rear two types of buffaloes, two breeds of buffalo. If it is a cow farm, any two breeds of buffalo, uh, cows. So they have restricted that. But number of uh, breeds to be selected are more. You can select anyone. It, it is possible, madam, because this scheme is not only for an area. And animals, breeds are area-wide. You go to Andhra, you will get a Angol breed. You go to uh, Tamil Nadu, you will get Ambalacheri. You go to Kerala, you will get some other breed. You come to Karnataka, you will get Malnad Gidda, Devuni. So how they cannot restrict a person being in Karnataka, he cannot rear the Karnataka breed. He can rear. But then he will be having Devni and plus any other breed. So only two breeds they have given. Subsidy is allowed up to two breeds. For one okay. farm. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, there is another part of a question. One second, sir. Yes, ma'am. No issue. Take your time. Uh, it has to be applied separately or only uh, one application? No, no, it? one application only. One application only, cow and buffalo, both can be applied. Like 200 animals are there, no? So what I will do, I will be keeping 20 buffaloes and 180 cows. Or 180 buffaloes and 20 cows. Or 100 buffaloes, 100 cows. Or 100 saiwal and 100 game. Like that you can do. Animal number is fixed. Breed number is fixed. And cow buffalo is also fixed. Okay. I have completed the questions from my side, sir. We have two participants from your end. If they have any questions, they can unmute. Participants can unmute the mic and ask. Mr. Shiva, yeah. sir. Yeah. This is Raghu here. Yeah, please. No. Yeah. Uh, hi, doctor. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Ma Good evening. Yeah. Uh, so, the, once again, the, if you don't mind, uh, I just wanted to understand uh, the bank loan versus uh, our own fund. 10% hmm. percentage versus whatever. If you don't mind, yeah. can I see the slide again, sir? Yeah. Yeah, just wait. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, next, uh, yes. No, I'll next. come to that slide. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. This is this slide, yeah. Okay, this uh, one funds 100%, I mean 10 percentage is 43.5 lakhs. Yeah. Bank loan 37.5. No, so, no, 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 no. See. Yeah. It is a, if you are giving own funds, mm. then only 10% you have to give to the bank. Mm -hmm. And if it is the bank loan, mm -hmm. bank loan then own mm -hmm. funds also, ha, huh, yes, you are right. You are right. Own fund means the 200 subsidies from government, balance money is your money. Okay. 10% only you have to give initially mm -hmm. and uh, balance you can you can use your money. Uh, yes, you are right. I have to further clarify on this. But they say at some place, they say at some place that own money frequently asked question, they are saying that uh, own money cannot be allowed more than this level. Yeah, they don't allow own money uh, mm -hmm. larger quantity. Mm -hmm. I will uh, I'll come back to you on this, Mr. Raghu. No problem. I will discuss that. Second thing is uh, uh, the 200 number of animals, like yeah. whatever the combination. Yeah. Uh, it will be in the stages, right? No stage. They are not giving a stage. That's, okay. the, that's the reason issues. Look no at problem. this slide. Uh -huh. All these points have five acre land, 200 animals. Yeah, yeah, animals. Yeah. So everything, all these two slides, you have to complete in one year. Yeah, yeah. so even one year also, it will be stages or uh, uh, ha, I mean, ha, 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 ha. there will be stages. Because yeah, the religious okay. stage, their religious is here. See, I told you how the subsidy will be given. Yeah, this no, no, I'm not talking about the money, sir. I'm talking about the number increase. Yes, increase sir, here, here, mm. here the, uh, they have given uh, how you go. First, you apply. Have given somewhere. First, to apply, mm. like you have uploaded the application. Right. Uh, no, that slide is not here. So, no, sorry to interrupt, doctor. What I'm trying to know, 200 animals in a year, mm -hmm. uh, maybe first month, I, I put it like this, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. So when uh, bank loan all approved, shell, uh, sorry, whatever the shed is made and order all these things there, mm -hmm. the first set of animal, what is the minimum number of animals they will give? What are, no, no, what no. is the mess? No, 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 not like that. I'll tell you. Okay. Okay. They are asking your uh, six uh, formats with two uh, affidavits. Yeah, yeah. Done. You have mm. given, it has a screen. Now they have cleared also. You yeah. have also indicated the bank. Letter yeah. has come to the bank. Mm -hmm. The moment you withdraw from the bank, mm -hmm. that your day starts, 363 mm -hmm. days starts from there. Mm. So now you are free to do shed construction, plant mm -hmm. issue, uh, mm -hmm. water cultivation, bringing right. the animals, water, oh. everything for 12 months. They are not telling you do first month, second month, third month, fourth month. No. Okay, understand. So 12 months, mm -hmm. they are not going to ask anything. No, but you will be asking, okay, sir, I have mm -hmm. spent this much of money. Mm -hmm. Now I need the equal, equal amount of subsidy from your side. Yeah, okay. So that okay. will come only once the animal arrive. Oh yeah, once animal, whatever the product of this is, the, let's say if I bring 100 animal in the first phase. No, no, they are phase. not telling anything like that. Okay. They are okay. telling, they are telling that uh, the uh, animals are there in the, uh, in the farm. They have not given any number. But last release they have given. 10% okay. of calf bond will be the last 25% of the subsidy release. Last 50 lakh will be released at that time. So okay. they have given something like on the shed. That shed is there. 
uh, fodder cultivation is done and the structure, they call it infrastructure is there. Now animals have also arrived after six months, seven months, eight months. So fundraising- yes, Understand, understand doctor, understand, understand. Okay, no problem. I'm, I'm done with my question. Anyway, I clarify the bank matter later when we happen to talk. Yeah. Animal arrive is, is nothing but uh, it's from the, uh, the government's uh, designated- uh, No. Uh, uh -huh. Government, no, no. The, it is everything. That question is there in the frequently asked question. People right. say whether NDDB will help in purchase right, right, of animal. Right. The purchase it's of uh, animal. The no. young one. Okay. They say mm, no. Okay. okay. The okay. young one will be purchased by uh, them only the male calves. That is for semen bank. So suppose right. about 20 male calves. They will find four or five male calves as on their parameters. Calf right. uh, weight at birth is the main parameter. So that they will select and they you will rear it. They will pay for it. That will be going to the uh, uh, that will be going to the bull mother farms. Right. So that they will take. They are okay. not making any commitment for the female calf. Female calf. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And Understood. they are also telling it will be on right. the market rate. Yes. Yeah. Okay, doctor. I'm done. Hmm. Yeah, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we have now completed the round of questions on behalf of agricultureinformation.com. We like to thank Dr. P. K. Srivastava for the talk and for answering the questions. I like to also thank all the participants in the meeting. This meeting will now be closed. Thank you very much, madam. You're most welcome, sir. Uh, thank you very much.